Most artists use their sketchbooks to test out ideas and work on their skills. At least, that is what sketchbooks are traditionally for. Recently, it seems artists primarily draw in their sketchbooks to make flip-through videos, which is a can of worms that you and I can maybe open in a future video, but today is about how I use sketchbooks. At least, most of the time. To me as a professional artist, sketchbooks have become a secret weapon to keep me from feeling uninspired, miserable or even depressed. And today I'm going to share with you how. And while doing that, I will be creating a very special painting inspired by one of my all-time favorite movies. So let's do this thing that I do on the internet and paint and talk about it. Later in the video I have something very special planned for this painting by the way. And I really, really need your help for that. So please keep watching and a big thank you in advance. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Honestly, the internet is probably the best thing that has happened to artists since tubed paints. But being an artist in the 21st century comes with its own set of challenges. And oh boy, challenges they are. From how to stand out as an artist, to dealing with envy or finding like-minded people. But there's one thing in particular that I feel is becoming a bigger and bigger issue with each year. And one that I have been struggling myself with over the years. And I know many artists out there are too. And it's this. The frustrating gap between what you have to do as an artist and what you actually want to do. Every creative person creates for a reason. Doesn't matter if we talk about painting, or writing, or making movies. And today, many of these reasons are in some way or another tied to social media. Whether it's clicks, likes, or attention, or money, it's always the same story. You fall in love with doing something. It starts out as a hobby, then it becomes a passion, and for some it might even become a job. And before you know it, you find yourself creating things that have hardly anything to do with the things you did when you started your creative journey. I think everyone knows what I'm talking about. Over time, something changes. And the thing that usually changes is that at some point you stop creating for yourself and you start creating for other people. For the hobby artists, it could be when they start posting their art on social media. For the professional artists, it could be when they sell a piece of art. When people start liking, sharing, buying, commenting, etc. It changes you. And it changes what you do. You are constantly told, this is good, keep doing this, stop doing that, nobody wants this, etc. And over time, your mindset and the things you create change. When was the last time you created something for yourself? When was the last time you made a fan art piece? You wrote a piece of fan fiction? Maybe you made a movie only you think is cool. When was the last time you made something where you didn't worry about anyone else but you. I want to be honest with you for a second. If you create something in the 21st century, in this day and age of social media, you have to play by some rules, if you like it or not. If you want to sell something, for example, some things just inherently work better than others. Deep fried fries, for example, will always sell better and be more popular than oven baked fries. Period. And you have similar facts when it comes to art, when it comes to books, movies, etc. If you want to have clicks or attention on the other hand, well, you can or even have to do things like lying and deceiving people. That is, if you really, really want to make it. If you want to see a good example of that and what social media can do to artists, I suggest you check out this video that Jaza made recently, where he actually touches on that topic. And if you want to get likes, just hundreds and hundreds of thousands of likes, well, well, that's actually super easy. You just need to paint hot, cute, sexy, innocent girls. But in all seriousness, many or even most of the things that we eventually end up creating are not truly really the things that we would create if we took money or likes or clicks out of the equation. Or if we were kids or teens again. And this gap between the things that we have to do as creatives and the things that we actually would do is an inner conflict that sooner or later will take a toll on every creative individual. No one of course likes to admit to this, but I can guarantee you it's true. Chances are very high that the last thing you created was created 
with the goal of clicks, likes, views, attention, money or improvement or a combination of all of the above in mind. Which, don't get me wrong, isn't necessarily a bad thing. But when is the last time you truly created something for yourself with the only goal in mind to enjoy the process or have a good time? I don't think there's anything wrong in creating art to make money or get likes or whatever, but sooner or later it catches up with every creative person and we start feeling uninspired, unfulfilled, burned out, sometimes even depressed and that is because we don't balance the things we quote unquote have to do out with what we want to do. But in my opinion, this is what you need to do if you want to be a creative person, an artist, even an entrepreneur in the 21st century, in this day and age, and if you want it to be sustainable. And that, my friends, brings us to what and why I'm painting here today. The sketchbook has become my place where I create art for the soul. You've seen some of these paintings before, a weird collection of random subjects that mainly really only serve one purpose, to make me happy. Whether it's a completely random animal that I painted because I was curious about painting one particular reflection or a movie scene from one of my favorite movies. These paintings are never my most popular works of art and I usually never sell them. I also don't care about how many likes they get or if they grow my online presence. No, in between these pages is just art for me. Just like the painting I'm creating here. A love letter, so to speak, to one of my favorite movies of all time, Back to the Future. This movie for me is peanut butter for the soul. The soundtrack, the characters, the dialogue. I'm not gonna bore you with my theories and thoughts on how and why this movie is just lightning in a bottle. But it's safe to say that it has and always will have a very special place in my heart. And this painting here not only captures the nostalgia and the happiness I felt growing up with the movie, but it also captures the genuine joy I felt when I was first starting out as an artist and painting only the things I wanted to paint. And that brings us to the surprise and the part where I have to admit that I wasn't 100% honest with you. Yes, it's true that I painted this just for myself, but I would actually also like it to serve one more purpose, and that is to give back. I will be auctioning off this sketchbook painting and donating all of the proceeds to the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's research. I know that millions of people out there feel exactly the same way that I do about this movie, and if we can somehow come together in this way and give something back, I would be one happy painter. So, starting today, this painting will be up for auction on eBay and it will run until the end of the week. You can find a link to the auction in the description down below. I know not everyone can afford an original piece of art, but you can still help and support a good cause by spreading the word. Like the video, leave a comment or share the video with your friends so we can get more people to join the auction. It's not often that you have an opportunity like this where you can do something you want and at the same time give back to something that has so much meaning to you. So I really hope you will join me in giving back this holiday season and friends, I hope you take some time for yourself to create something that is only for you and for you only. And with that friends, I wish you all a wonderful day. See you in the next video and yeah, have a good one.